to talk about Bitcoin because we had some very interesting developments this week with the IRS coming out and saying, Bitcoin, this is property, it's not a currency. I know that you've written about this. You've talked about how Bitcoin is a little bit like the internet in the early 90s. Um, explain your thesis, because I, I might want to poke some holes in that one. Go ahead. So think of Bitcoin as a protocol, just as the Internet is a protocol. Mm -hmm. But up until we had Netscape, we didn't really have a way for people to get around the Internet. And you didn't see wide adoption of the Internet really until then. Bitcoin is the same way. And I think because people focus on the price of Bitcoin so much as an asset, they don't really get the power of the underlying protocol. And what we're going to see coming up over the next couple of years, and it's already starting, is you're going to see apps basically built on top of this protocol that allow people to interact with Bitcoin better. And you're going to see the view of Bitcoin move away from an asset that people just want to hold as an appreciating thing and more as a tool to transfer value amongst people. See, what I would say is, you know, I agree with you in that it could be an amazing tool to transfer value. The technology behind this is pretty incredible. Um, but I also question whether Bitcoin is really, really the vehicle that ultimately survives. And I, I think back to the days of Napster, for example, mm -hmm. and when you know people wanted to share uh, downloaded music. Um, and it, it, Napster was hit with a whole slew of legal hurdles with you know music industry coming out and saying, no, you just can't do this. But it was also pretty innocent, right? In that it was just a bunch of kids, you know, trying to share music files. So they were filling a need in the marketplace. On the other hand, you got Bitcoin, um, which also is running into a lot of legal troubles, if you would. Um, and there's more incentive for federal authorities to come down hard. It's not just the music industry, it's federal authorities that want to come down on hard, uh, on Bitcoin pretty hard because of the illegal uh, sort of element around this. In other words, uh, one of the reasons it was first used was to buy drugs on SilkRoad.com, the eBay of drugs. So is this different in that will authorities have a bigger problem with it because of its origins, because of this sort of tainted feeling that it's associated with the underworld. So two major things there. All major trends start with, you know, a small group of people with a very specific interest in seeing that technology develop. And they spread out from there. And there was a great blog post. I don't remember who it was written by the other day, but it was basically what would happen if the federal government introduced cash today into the market and cash had not existed before and all of the issues that you would see around cash. And it was worse. Basically, all but of those things are worse than Bitcoin. Right. But think, but think about cash as a mechanism for buying and selling illicit things or it's even better than Bitcoin is at doing that. Um, and the other major thing is... Though not online, in person. Though not online. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, but Bitcoin... And harder to transfer cash, say, from country to country um, than it would be with Bitcoin. So the biggest thing about Bitcoin here that the government is worried about is taxation. And this is where the IRS ruling the other day really comes in and has hurt Bitcoin over the last couple of days, but I believe won't hurt Bitcoin in the long term. How, how has it hurt Bitcoin over the last couple of so, days? I mean, other than we've seen the price decline. If you why? bought a Bitcoin for $500 today, and three days from now, Bitcoin was worth $550, and you went and bought you know, a latte with that Bitcoin or a piece of that Bitcoin, what the government is saying is you need to pay taxes on the appreciation in of that Bitcoin, even though you used it to buy a physical good. And you have to keep track of the appreciation and, and what you bought. And what people are saying is that that's, that's going to make it unduly, oh, yeah. you know, totally hard hurdle. for well, people to use it. Well, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, so you have a government, not yeah. a music industry, a government that's not supportive of this right now, that's looking for ways to yeah. regulate it. So ultimately, does someone harness this technology work with the government or have more regulation involved to create a product uh, that can do a lot of what Bitcoin can already do, but does it within the, the, the confines of a legal structure? So there will be regulated apps, you know, basically. But I think when you think about the difference between Napster and Bitcoin, Napster was a company. Napster was not an open source piece of software. And that's why it got taken down at the end of the day, because the founders couldn't deal with all of that pressure being on themselves and the legal ramifications of that personally. But Bitcoin, nobody controls Bitcoin. There's nobody to sue. 
you can sue the individual apps, but there will always be another app, and you can put that app offshore. So it's very different. But then different. It, it runs into the hurdles of, you know, do I really want to put my money in Bitcoin if I'm worried about the volatility? So of the here's currency? the important aspect of that. You're going to see apps built on top of Bitcoin where there's no currency risk associated with using Bitcoin as the protocol. And this is what I wrote about the other day, where you could basically build a new ACH on top of Bitcoin, where money gets transferred from your bank account to something like Coinbase, and then Coinbase immediately to Bitcoin, the transfer yeah, of is, Bitcoin this is happens. What, this is what uh, Charlie Schramm was doing with BitInstant. I yes. mean, there was this instant transfer. Exactly. Which and nobody takes currency risk. Yeah. And, but, you know, the Fed, he's now under house arrest um, because the Fed's... Uh, have busted him for allegedly uh, money laundering. Well, not everybody is, uh, you know, above board.